Hey you guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule Number One Investing and today I'm gonna to discuss what it means to buy a stock on sale, right? And how it can help you get a much better return on your investment. Now, to eliminate risk further, this is obviously we wanna get rid of risk in our portfolio. You wanna be able to spot the difference between an event and a complete meltdown. That, that would be a worst case scenario for us as a small investor is to buy into a company that's actually terminal, that we thought was in a short-term event and it turns out it's like done, right? So how do you judge whether this event is gonna be temporary or permanent for the company? How do you know if that company's going to recover or if it's really gonna die? So here's how you know. If the company can bounce back relatively easily within one to three years, then you have a rule one event. How, okay, how, how would you know that? Well, you here's the key thing. You don't want to make it hard to figure that out. It, it can't be like you have figured it out, but no one else figured it out. It's gotta be obvious that it's gonna recover in one to three years, okay? So if it's not obvious, if you're not reading that, oh yeah, cotton prices went through the roof, and so Gildan that makes t-shirts and Hanes, they're all going on sale because everybody's bailing out of t-shirt companies because now their t-shirts are gonna to cost too much or their costs are gonna be higher and they're not gonna make profits and it's gonna take a couple of years for this to get over with and that is obvious to everyone that knows anything about what's going on. So it shouldn't be that you have to just be a genius and figure this out. It should be absolutely, you read it everywhere. Because here's the thing, if it's gonna take over a year to recover, then the fund managers are bailing out. They're, they don't care. The CEO of a company, and I've seen this with Gildan, for example, a few years ago, cotton prices go through the roof. And the president of Gildan comes on and says, oh, well, we're gonna have a pretty terrible year here. And pew, everybody's out. They know cotton prices are gonna go back down in a year or two, but it doesn't matter because they're basically saying, well, I know the rest of the guys here on Wall Street are gonna get out of this for a year or two. And I'll come back and get into it a couple years from now. But knowing that everybody's getting out, I don't wanna hold it because it's gonna go down 50%. And so they all bail out and what happens? It goes down 50%. Well, we're sitting there waiting for that to happen. It's front page news. The CEO says, you know, well, a year, you know, a year and a half, we'll be back. That's all it takes, guys. You don't make this harder than it actually is. It's not hard. Most investors basically can't wait that long. They can't, and they're gonna sell. And you are gonna buy what they're selling at this big discount, and then you're just gonna sit tight for a few years. You're not gonna do anything. You're gonna do nothing, and you're gonna watch your wealth grow. So now, here's the thing. Keep in mind, the difference between a company's price and its value when we're doing all this, all right? So understand the difference between price and value. Price is what you paid, value is what you got, okay? You paid a million dollars for a $100,000 car, okay? You still just got a $100,000 car, you didn't get a million dollar car, all right? In a total train wreck where this company is going chapter 11 bankrupt, is it's gonna die. The value of the company is declining, all right? Not just the price but the actual value of the company is on its way to zero. In a rule one event, the price is declining. There's no change in the value, right? The value comes from looking out across the future cash uh, of a company, the cash the company is producing over time that's gonna come to us as an owner. That's the value. One or two bad years means nothing in the long-term value of the company. So. The fear is happening, the price is coming down, but the value stays right where it was. And this gap between the value here and the price down here is what rule one investors use to get rich. That's what it's all about. And pundits, you know, the talking heads on TV, like to say that the price of the stock is its value. That makes it so easy and they're basing that on 30, 40 years of modern portfolio theory, which is now being debunked everywhere. It's just not true. Just not true. The market is not that rational. Many things influence a stock price, including very emotional things that have nothing to do with value, and they just change the price, including rule one events that generate fear in the market. So once you know it's a rule one event, then the next step is to determine 
whether or not the business is fiscally sound. So if we're looking at Gildan and the, and the price of the stock is dropping and the price of cotton is going through the roof, will Gildan recover from this? Will a t-shirt company recover from this? Is its moat large enough, right? So to judge whether the company can recover or whether it's a train wreck, you're gonna look to see if the business has a big moat. It's the moat that allows that business to have two or three, four bad years and still recover. Coca-Cola, they invented new Coke back in the 90s and they got crushed by Pepsi, crushed. But because they have such a big moat, three or four years of bad stuff by bad management ultimately doesn't affect the long-term value of the business. So we're gonna look to see if they've got a moat, number one. We're gonna look to see if management is solid. Uh, do, we, do we have something going on that is we're being lied to, is something terrible happening to um, our the allocation of our capital by management? And we'd look at that to see, are they increasing their debt like crazy? Are they looking at, uh, is their return on equity going down? Is return on invested capital going down, right? Are they acquiring companies they shouldn't be buying? Stuff like that, right? We're gonna take a closer look at the specific event that triggered the price drop. And we're gonna say this, is this event the kind of problem that the company has recovered from in the past. Hmm. All right, so think about it from, let's say, a, a global perspective then. You know, we're going into a recession. Is this the kind of thing that the economy has recovered from in the past? Well, yeah, we have a recession on average every seven years for the whole history of our country. It's like, yeah, okay, we're gonna recover. Right? So it's, it should be on that level of simple, like stupidly simple. We, we're not trying to jump over six foot bars here and you know make some massively brilliant prognosis about the future. We wanna, we wanna just step over a six inch bar. Should be obvious that this is a temporary problem in just one industry, in just one company, in just one country, whatever. So, all right, let's come back to moat. Let's consider the moat. Now, this is the unique ability of this company to have a durable competitive advantage to its competition. It's going to be able to prevent competition from getting at it, right? So this is the question. Does this event wreck the moat? If yes, then this could be a death knell for that company. And by the way, when we were looking at Chipotle, you guys know we did a whole thing on Chipotle for a long time and bought in there when it was in the you know, 200s and something. And we were watching short positions. That was people who were saying it's gonna go down the tubes, writing up these positions saying the moat has been broken. That is Chipotle's moat is that we are a healthy alternative to fast food and here they are, people are throwing up in their restaurants because of the E. coli poisoning. So this is killing their moat. They, uh, they used to be healthy, now they're E. coli. Well, I think that was stupid, right? And if you're not sure, you just wait a while and see if they've gotten over the E. coli. And in fact, they had the E. coli poisoning in 2015, and we didn't really make a serious reinvestment in that company until 2018, almost two and a half years later because we wanted to make sure that they had this thing fixed. And they did, and the stock was still down there. You don't have to rush. It has, it's just gotta be a no-brainer, you guys. It's just gotta be a no-brainer. So if this company has a good moat, and Chipotle's moat was fantastic, then you're likely looking at a great rule one investment opportunity. So when you buy rule one companies, after a rule one event, you are really on the road to growing your long-term wealth. You are gonna do great. And after you do that one time, you'll know that this is fully within your range of ability. Your research to find great companies, your patience to wait for the right time to buy, that's what's now paying off. You just have to wait for your company to recover from the event and then watch that price take off. It's really exciting. You watch it just take off and return to its former level. It's a beautiful thing because you don't have to do anything. You can sit there for years. And your long-term perspective is going to bring you the rewards that we're looking for. Rewards of financial freedom, rewards of wealth, the rewards of spending time with your family, time doing what you want, you know, contributing to the world in the way you want to do it. And ultimately, if you're tired and you just want to play golf, great, have a great retirement. So I would love to hear from you guys. Can you think of any events that put a company that you love on sale, let's say in the last 10 years or so? Can you come up with any of those events in the last 10 years? So leave a comment below with your answer and I'll be sure to follow up with you. Time to go play. See ya.
You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about how to find stocks on sale, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. We have got a lot of stuff there for you. And don't forget to click the button on the screen. We got a free gift right there for you. So thanks again for watching.